Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys Median XL, which is a Diablo 2 mod that's very popular. In fact, it's one of the more popular ones. Um, I have created content on here or on this uh, this mod a few times. I think I've played like two seasons. Um, this is going to be, I believe, the third season I played. Now, before I get into this, I do want to let you guys know that I'm going to post a trailer for Median XL in the uh, comments slash description. And I'm also going to post uh, a bunch of bookmarks that will help you along the way if you play this game. I know a lot of people do have trouble when they try to get into modded games like this where they just don't understand where to start or how to progress because since it's not an official game it's difficult to really find like credible sources sometimes even though you can use the website i'm just trying to make it easier for you guys so with that being said uh, i want to talk about what's new in this season specifically so in this season which is the 20th season um, there is like quality of life basically which is good because it's like it's just making it so it's easier to farm specific things But this doesn't really matter. We're gonna talk more so about this right here. So We're gonna be checking out necromancer uh, summoners are one of my favorite playstyle in Diablo 2 um, Mainly because I guess because it's on an older engine It feels a lot better to have things a bit more automated Opposed to like, you know trying to play like trying to aim in Diablo 2 versus aiming on path of exile, right? It's just a, it's a lot different in my opinion um, but anyway, this is a huge summoner rework and necromancer rework in general. So to start, um, summoners have had most of their minions replaced completely, which is good because it's it's trying to basically like scale them up to the next part, right? So say you play a build that has crazy good AOEs, but then you're stuck playing a, a necromancer and like your minions are attacking one guy at a time, you just can't compete, right? Like it, like let's be real. However, in this one now you can see here there's a plethora of new summons. So, Blood Skeleton New Skill. Your bread and butter summon has an area of effect attack and provides a powerful aura to your team. Nighthawk New Skill. These suicidal hawks will provide a very solid boss, skill or boss killer. You can summon lots of them at once. Abyssal Knight. Death Knights with a powerful ranged elemental attack. Their thermal blast converts damage to both fire and cold. Iron Golem New Skill. Yagai King of Ents. You name it. Summon a powerful golem using a metallic item as a base. That's like such a cool mechanic from which you will inherit all stats. This summon persists through games, which is very cool, which means you can like all in on it, basically. Uh, Resurgence, new skill, powerful passive that will boost your minion's damage and chance to avoid damage. Uh, all new summoner skills have powerful effects that scale with hard points. So just to explain hard points versus soft points, hard point means you level up, you get a skill point, you allocate it into the skill. Soft point would be you kill a mob, it drops a piece of gear, it says plus one to blood golem. That's a soft point. Uh, we're not really going to be playing totem or melee, so I'm not really going to go over this now. But ultimates are pretty cool. Um, in Median XL, I think you get one or two ultimates. I don't remember. I think you get one neutral ultimate and one ultimate based off of the choice you chose. I don't know exactly. Um, but it's just something cool to work towards. Where basically now Necromancers have been reworked to be more in line with like the build types. So pretty much all of them are going to provide an aura, which is really cool. And then there's some other endgame stuff, but I'm not really going to go too much into this uh, necessarily. This one is basically making it so party play is not as OP. And then, uh, oh, various recipes will now work on ethereal items. Ooh, ethereal is good for, uh, for uh, mercs. Okay, so to go ahead and explain the game. Now, this is not like an installation guide video or anything, but I just want to go ahead and show you. So I'm going to double click my Median Excel launcher. Uh, from here, remember that you can go to your settings and you can basically mess around with like your glide option. Uh, you can mess around with, you, you basically have stuff you can do here. And I believe you can even set up a loot filter. I don't remember exactly where that is though. I'm just going to pause this D2 music because it's going to overlap. If not... Well, Iron Golem was in D2, but you can't compare vanilla to a a mod that's had 20 seasons of of development you know it's just, it's literally just not the same it's like trying to compare potato to carrot it, it just doesn't work okay so i'm just going to go single player because the servers aren't live yet so i can't really show you know some of the stuff so um let me go ahead and show you guys some of the cool stuff so, here is how your skill trees work. Now, for the most part, 
all classes follow this kind of archetype, right? So you're going to have two uh, two skill trees, and within those skill trees, you have lines, right? So like you can see, this is like Frost Claw Totem, Storm Eye Totem, Totemic Mastery, Fire Heart Totem, Souls Bond, uh, and then here's like Embalming, which is passive, uh, Summon. So this is like more defensive, right? Uh, yeah, another passive, uh, Curse Enemies. Yep, and then another passive. And then you have, for example, summon an army of skeletons with a powerful aura. Oh, this is blood skeleton. Oh, the new stuff are actually in. Summon an army of skeletons with a powerful aura. Oh, they have crushing blow aura. Oh, that's double damage, right? But crushing blow doesn't work on bosses. Um, suicidal hawks that deal concentrated damage has area of effect. Total hawks four. Plus one pack size per ten base levels. One hawk per two base levels. Grim Vision Aura and Evocation Aura. Uh, Abyss Knight. Ranged Death Knights with an Elemental Attack. Converts 100% physical damage to Fire Cold. Um, one Knight per six base levels. All damage reduced by... Okay, that's pretty cool. What is this? Iron Golem. This is the one we read earlier. Cast Spike Rush on attack. And then Resurgence. Passive, your minions become more powerful and resistant. So they get minion damage, and then synergies is chance to avoid damage and summon minion damage per base level. And then to just look at the reward, because this is where you see the ultimate skills. Talons hold, passive, slows down targets and reanimates them as Rathma Priests. Graveyard, buff, periodically casts a deadly punisher at nearby enemies. These aren't the ultimates, actually. These are the reward skills. These are the ultimates. Uh, Jin, summon a fire demon with an aura of infernal power. Um, enemy elemental resistance. So it's actually a, a... Wow, that's cool. It gives plus max fire res and shreds enemy resistance. That's really good, considering the knights do fire in cold. Veil King... Sacrifice part of your army to resurrect the ultimate skeletal warlord, Veil vale King. Slows target by 60%, reanimate as Veil vale Terror. Reduce Necromancer minion count by, is that 50%? 10% chance to cast Plague Grasp on attack. Cast Crucify on attack. And has pretty ridiculous synergy. Ho oh, ho ho. This guy looks interesting. I do like one-man army minions. Well, it wouldn't really be a one-man army, but it would, you know, it'd just be a big boy. It'd be a big boy. Summon, let's see, evoke Rathma's avatar on Sanctuary, empowering necromancer minions and combat power. So this gives a ton of attack speed, like a ton of attack speed. This is probably what I'm gonna go between is these two. Veil King turns hostile when he gets killed. Warning turns hostile when killed. So wait, are you telling me that if you fight a boss and he kills your Veil King, not only do you get shit on, but he also makes sure that you die. That's pretty spooky, dude. Maybe he, like, doesn't scale with your buffs after he's been, like, reanimated. Like, turns hostile, so he'll, like, be easy clap, but... <laughs> Veil King, you are not prepared. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Can you imagine hardcore deaths to, to fucking Veil King? <laughs> and he keeps the scaling. Okay, this is pretty cool. Not gonna lie. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save and exit from here. Now I wanna talk just a little bit about these bookmarks because I think that the bookmarks are kind of important um, to the new players who like kind of don't really understand. So I'm just gonna go through this real fast. So you've got your base items, which is gonna be important um, basically for understanding what goes into what uniques. Um, you can turn items into uniques this way. Um, it's also good for just like rune words and in general. So another one would be the crafting compodium. This is not like the most important thing to do, but it's nice to have on the side to read. Um, you can do without it. Next up, there is the tiered uniques. This is very important because when you find a unique in Diablo 2, if you look here, there's tiers of it. So tier one, two, three, four. Now the tiers, uh, whenever you tier them up, their stats go up. More importantly, the requirements go up, but this is very good for progressing in Diablo 2. It's good because you don't have to rely on RNG. You can simply craft your gear, right, until you get to a point, and then maybe you're looking for a specific set, so you trade with people. But this is very important because you can basically break down uniques or legendaries you don't need, 
turn those in, I think it's like five for one, and then make yourself one that you actually do need, right? So it's a very, very nice complex system. Um, then next up, we're gonna go into gems and runes. Um, kind of important to know because obviously this is not really Diablo 2, it's, it's a complete rework, so uh, it'd be important to understand what does what in here. Cube recipes, another really important one. Um, you don't have to read everything here, but you should understand the arcane shards because arcane shards into arcane crystals is how you craft your tiered uniques. Um, this is basically, I honestly don't remember this, but you probably might need this, so I'm just not sure. Just give it a read. Shrines are going to be used for crafting. You don't have to pay attention to this now, but if you're trying to craft and make like, you know, really nice characters, these are what you're going to use later on. Uh, it is popular to trade shrines for other shrines with people. So, for example, say you have seven fascinating and you need abandoned, you can trade, right? Challenges. Challenges are really important because challenges unlock those skills we were talking about earlier um, that are above the ultimates. Uh, it's also cool because you get like class charms and stuff, which give like huge benefits, basically. It's a very, very nice progression game, and which is why I really enjoy it. So this is a this is like a progression chart. This is probably like one of the most straightforward and important things to know. This basically um, this basically explains to you everything there is to do in Median XL in terms of killing bosses and upgrading your character, right? So these are all of like the dungeons slash bosses slash rifts slash challenges uh, that you're gonna do in the progression order, right? And this is a really 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 nice chart to follow. It's organized very nicely. This is probably like your main bread and butter thing to use. And then of course we have dungeons, which is basically what that chart I just showed you, but it's more so like specifically for the dungeons. Uh, and it can give you like guides and information, how to like kill them, this strategy and everything else. Um, nonetheless, Diablo 2 Median Excel season 20 does go live in 19 minutes. So if you wanna check it out, feel free to. Remember, I will have all of these links that I have here posted in the description or stickied in the comments. Feel free to read everything here. All you need is the basic Diablo 2, and you can go ahead and play it. Highly recommend checking out this trailer because it's really, really cool and worth watching. Anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed the old Grim Dawn content, and I hope you guys can enjoy my Meeting Excel content to come. Take care, everybody.